they surveyed a bunch of CEOs. I just read about this. Guess how many felt a sense of imposter syndrome? Like what percentage? Oh, I would say 99 and 1% Pretty. lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would guess. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was around 73%. The other piece of that is what's interesting is I bet if you went to a high school and you asked them to think about who are some of the most confident and capable people in terms of type of role they have in society, CEO would be one of those they, they would rank pretty high mm -hmm. as far as people they think aren't dealing with imposter syndrome. You've had a lot of work experience. You've made it to this point at the top of the ladder. You're doing like difficult things. Lots of people respect you. It's a testament to that aspect of our psychology, mm -hmm. which is that really anytime you're doing something new that is different from what you have done a bunch of times in the past, if you're doing it well and it's really new and novel, there's going to be a piece of that. I, I love that you're pointing to some of that optics of what a CEO is, right? One, it's a pretty lonely world. Your input are by people who are highly incentivized to say what you want to mm -hmm. hear. It's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So you have to work against stream, upstream, mm -hmm. to build a culture that is not that way. How do you do that in your time at, as a CEO? How do you protect against that? One of my tactics, because it's largely true, is I will stare at my director of engineering and go, you know, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Walk me through methodically what that logical principles are. Look at me like I'm a first grader. And then all of a sudden you're bridging gaps, you're building a culture where this person feels more confident and more importantly, they're confident about how they approach you.